In national news, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, received at Safriya Palace the Commander of the U.S. Central Command, Lieutenant General Michael Corolla, and his delegation on the occasion of his visit to Bahrain. His Majesty welcomed the Commander and expressed Bahrain's pride in the historic bilateral relations and the strong partnership that dates back to decades that is based on trust, mutual respect, and joint coordination, praising the bilateral cooperation in all fields that aims to achieve the aspired goals. His Majesty praised the role of the U.S. Department in maintaining security and stability in the region and enhancing international peace and security. He hailed the role of the commander in developing cooperation, especially in the defense and security fields between the two friendly and allied countries. The meeting also discussed regional and international developments. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular regarding the Arafah and Eid al Adha holidays. According to the circular, Bahrain's ministries and public institutions will be closed on the day of Arafah and on Eid al Adha, corresponding to the 15th to the 18th of June, respectively. The Foreign Affairs Minister, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, participated in the 160th GCC Ministerial Council meeting in Qatar. The meeting was presided over by the Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Chairman of the current session of the Ministerial Council, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Al Thani. It was attended by the GCC Foreign Ministers and GCC Secretary General, Jassim Al Badawi. The meeting reviewed the implementation of the Council's previous resolutions, the Ministerial Committee's recommendations on joint GCC action, the General Secretary's reports on GCC cooperation, and the progress of free trade negotiations between the GCC and international partners. The Council also discussed the results of strategic dialogue meetings between the GCC and other countries, emphasizing the importance of implementing approved measures to strengthen cooperation between member states and these nations. They also discussed regional and international developments, the ongoing war in the Gaza Strip and Arab efforts to cease fire in the Strip and protect and deliver humanitarian aid to civilians. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, participated in the ministerial meeting between the GCC and Yemen, which took place in Qatar in the presence of GCC foreign ministers and the GCC Secretary General. The GCC Yemen meeting was led by Qatar's Prime Minister, Foreign Affairs Minister, President of the current Ministerial Council, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman bin Jasab Al Thani, and Yemen's Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriate Affairs, Dr. Shai Mohsen. El Zindani. The meeting discussed enhancing cooperation between GCC countries and Yemen in political, economic, security and social fields and the results of the work of the Joint Committee to determine the development needs of Yemen and support the process of development and stability there to benefit its people. They also discussed political and security developments in Yemen and regional and international efforts aimed at reviving the political process to achieve a comprehensive and sustainable political solution that ends the Yemeni crisis in order to achieve the aspirations of the Yemeni people for security, peace and development and to maintain regional security and stability. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also participated in the sixth joint ministerial meeting of the GCC Turkey Strategic Dialogue in Doha with the participation of GCC Foreign Ministers Affairs and the GCC Secretary General. The GCC side was headed by the Qatari Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, President of the ministerial meeting of the current session, Sheikh Mohammed Abdurrahman Al Thani, while the Turkish side was headed by the Turkish Minister of Foreign Affairs, 
Hakan Fidan. The course of the deep-rooted historical ties between the GCC and Turkey was discussed, as well as means to develop cooperation to serve common interests and enhance their regional role and efforts to achieve growth and prosperity. The two sides approved extending the joint work plan to 2025-29 and to continue holding committee and work team meetings. They also discussed regional and international developments, security threats and the repercussions of the war in Gaza, the Arab and regional efforts towards reaching a ceasefire, protecting civilians and delivering humanitarian aid, as well as the efforts to achieve peace in the Middle East and find a just and comprehensive solution for the Palestinian cause. The Kingdom of Bahrain ranked second among the Arab countries and third in the Middle East and North Africa in the Global Youth Development Index 2023 report issued by the General Secretariat of the Commonwealth of Nations in the UK and the Institute of Economic and Peace in Australia. We have more in this report. Positive results achieved for the youth movement and youth empowerment on the regional and international levels, as the Kingdom of Bahrain ranked second in the Arab countries and third in the Middle East and North Africa region in the Global Youth Development Index 2023, thanks to the successful policies adopted by the Kingdom of Bahrain through qualitative and modern initiatives and programs. Among these initiatives are the King Hamad Award for empowering youth to achieve sustainable development goals, the Nasser bin Hamad International Award for Youth Creativity, the Youth City 2030, the National Program Lama, in addition to the Hope Fund, the Youth Market, the Gaia Program, the Volunteer Platform, and many others. On this occasion, the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Ayman bin Tawfiq Lim Ayyad, affirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's achievement in this regard, which comes as a result of the support of His Majesty the King, who believed in the capabilities of Bahraini youth in shaping the future of the Kingdom. The Kingdom of Bahrain has proven that its youth sector has become a pioneer, and its youth experience is distinguished thanks to the Kingdom's efforts in enhancing and highlighting youth talents and building an administrative system that is motivating and supportive of creativity and excellence, in addition to strengthening the culture of belonging in the hearts of young people and providing multiple opportunities for them in order to lead society towards development and sustainability. This achievement will give the youth sector a strong motivation to move forward in the kingdom, as well as achieving more advanced positions at various levels. The Kingdom of Bahrain Hajj Mission, headed by Sheikh Adnan al Ghattan, worked to provide all necessary services that meet the needs of pilgrims, most notably medical services. We have more details in this report. As part of its efforts to serve pilgrims coming from the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Kingdom of Bahrain Hajj Mission has worked to provide all health and medical services to meet the needs of all Bahraini pilgrims. High efficiency and advanced equipment that the mission was keen to provide in the medical clinics affiliated with the mission of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Mecca in preparation for dealing with various expected cases during the Hajj season. The mission had opened medical clinics at the mission's headquarters in Mecca to provide services to all Bahraini campaigns and pilgrims of the kingdom, where it worked to raise its readiness using the latest medical technologies and sincere national expertise. The head of Bahrain Hajj Mission, Sheikh Adnan al Ghattan, affirmed that pilgrims can benefit from medical services available at the Agali Hospital and praised the efforts exerted by Saudi Arabia in serving pilgrims. Bahraini national competencies contribute effectively to providing these medical services and operating medical clinics efficiently to ensure the provision of appropriate services to the kingdom's pilgrims in order to guarantee a safe and comfortable Hajj performance. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has strongly condemned the Israeli attacks on the Nusayrat camp in central Gaza, which resulted in the death and injury of hundreds of innocent Palestinian civilians, mostly children and women, which violates human rights, international agreements, rules of international humanitarian law and all humanitarian values and norms. The Ministry renewed Bahrain's call to the international community, especially members of the UN Security Council, for the necessity of an urgent intervention to ensure 
ensure immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza to enforce the implementation of international resolutions related to the protection of civilians and civilian properties and entities and to deliver humanitarian and relief aid in a complete, safe, sustainable way without any barriers. It stressed the importance of giving priority to diplomatic solutions to end the devastating war that has been ongoing for months now and reviving peace negotiations in a way that fulfills the rights of the Palestinian people to establish their independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament and Board of Trustees Chairman of the Arab Observatory for Human Rights, Adel Asoumi, chaired the first meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Arab Observatory for Human Rights of the Arab Parliament in its second session in Cairo. He praised the low amendment of the Correction and Rehabilitation Institution Law that further enhances the human rights framework in Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King. He said that the amendments would contribute to further upholding the rights of inmates emphasizing that this step is a reflection of His Majesty the King's approach that aligns with the comprehensive development process. And I assume he also commended the efforts of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, to implement the directives of His Majesty in this regard.